Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. First off, I want to thank everyone who has subscribed to my channel. We recently hit the 20,000 subscriber mark and that number continues to grow every day. This community is awesome and I can't wait to share with you the new developments in my software for tracking rockets, satellites, and more, as well as documenting these historic launches and events. This past weekend, Red's Rhetoric and I worked together to test a new remote tracking feature that is enabling him to continue tracking rockets even from out of state over the internet, using his joysticks to command his Nexstar mount and P-1000 camera during launches. This video of the Transporter 1 launch was the very first test with this remote tracking feature, and Red performed the tracking entirely manually. With the latency of the connection, this makes it quite difficult to keep the rocket centered in view. However, I've implemented predictive tracking using flightclub.io, and if you stay to the end, you can see the developments with that and find out how you can get access to the software yourself. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition, and lift off. Pitching downrange. Stage one chamber pressure is nominal. Execute. And we've just passed Max Q. That is a really cool tracking shot of Falcon 9. All is looking good with the Stage 1 trajectory. Uh, in about a minute, we have three events coming up in quick succession. First up is main engine cutoff. That's where the nine engines on the first stage will shut off, followed by stage separation, where the... Invec engine chill has begun. We're about 20 seconds away from main engine cutoff, the start of those three events happening in rapid succession. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. Coming up in a few seconds, we should have the fairing deploy. In back ignition. Fairing separation confirmed. Here's the setup I use with my telescope. You can see this small USB camera with a C-mount lens mounted on top. This provides a video viewfinder and is used for automatic tracking with brightness or feature-based detection with the tracking software. The telescope itself is an 8-inch LX200 Classic and it's connected to the laptop by an RS-232 to 9-pin serial connection. The laptop is also equipped with joystick and throttle for manual control. I use the X-52 Satek, and this allows me to manually steer the telescope around. This is necessary even when doing optical tracking because at some point you'll have main engine cut off and the viewfinder camera won't be able to see anything. At that point it's necessary to take over manual control, especially during LZ-1 landings when there's a long coast phase when the booster is coming back. But when the booster is initially launching, it is possible for the telescope to automatically follow it based on its brightness. More recently, I've implemented predictive tracking, using data from the website flightclub.io to allow the telescope to automatically follow the path of the rocket. You simply download a CSV file from Flight Club and load it into my software. The software can then begin counting down to T0 and have the telescope automatically follow the predicted path of the rocket. You can then use joystick tracking or video-based tracking to correct for any differences between the observed and predicted trajectories and keep the rocket in the view. 
Not only does this make it easier to track launches, but Reds Frederick and I have been using this feature to practice remote tracking for upcoming launches. Using one telescope mount to project a red laser, while RED uses a second mount to remotely track it over the internet. If you want to support further development of this software and filming of future launches, then I'll be opening up channel memberships next week, and channel members will have access to compiled executables starting with this program for download and use in Windows, along with a more detailed tutorial of how to use the software. Until next time, clear skies folks.